Hi guys, today we're going to talk about blood typing. Um, and there are some big takeaways that I'd like you to get from this lesson. Um, one is just what are the blood types and what do, how do you um, get your blood type? What makes your blood type? Um, another takeaway that I would like you to get is how do we determine what somebody's blood type um, is? When you come to class next time, we're going to actually be doing some experiments where you're going to have um, a simulated sample of blood and you're going to have to determine the blood type. So we'll talk a little bit about how you do that. And then the last thing that I'd like you to know um, is who can donate to who and who can receive blood from who. So just to kind of start off here um, with a little bit of history, um, people didn't always know that there were different types of blood. Um, people just thought blood was blood, and if you were sick and you needed a transfusion, um, it was just assumed that anybody could give you blood. And what was happening is that sometimes that would work out and the person would get better, and sometimes, for no apparent reason, that person would die, and they couldn't figure out what was the difference. Why did it work for some people and why didn't it? And so Carl Landsteiner in um, the early 1900s was the first one to discover that not all human blood's the same. And so therefore, um, it does matter what kind of blood you're receiving. Um, and so he determined that there's four different basic types of blood. And what makes your blood a certain type um, is something called antigens on the surface of your red blood cells. So um, and when we think, when we talk about antigens, you got to kind of think of them as like little flags or little markers on your blood cells that tell your body, hey, I'm this blood type or I'm that blood type. And your body only recognizes what is natural to it. So um, if you have a certain blood type, you need to receive a similar type or it doesn't work out. Your body recognizes it as a foreign invader and wants to attack it. You also have... Um, so you have the, the regular classification of blood um, where you can be type A, you can be type B, you can be AB, or you can be O. Those are the four blood types that we have. And then there's another element to it too, which is um, looking to see whether you're Rh positive or Rh negative. And that Rh factor is another protein that you either have on the surface of your red blood cells and you're called Rh positive or you don't have it and you're Rh negative. And the Rh comes from the rhesus monkey. That's where they did some, um, some studies on this and discovered that there is this Rh factor. Um, and you can see down at the bottom of the screen the different percentages for different races that are um, Rh positive. And for whatever race we're looking at, the vast majority is positive. Um, but that's something else that we are going to be looking at in labs. So not only are you going to try to determine whether somebody's A or AB or O or B or whatever, you're also going to try to determine if they're Rh positive or Rh negative. And so these are some definitions that I would like you to know. Um, and you'll see on the Google form that you're filling out, some of these definitions are there for you. Um, so take a minute as we're going through this and get these definitions down. The first thing I have up here is the ABO blood group. So again, that's just based on whether you have the A antigen or that little flag, that little marker on your blood cell. If you have that, you're type A. Um, if you have the B antigen or marker, then you're type B. If you don't have either of those, then you're O. You don't have any antigens. And if you have both of those flags, then you're AB. And then the Rh factor, like I talked about, the another surface protein. Either you have it and you're positive or you don't and you're negative. That antigen is that flag or that marker that's on your um, blood, red blood cell that tells your body what your blood type is. And it makes sure that your body recognizes that. And so on that definition where it says it can stimulate the body to make antibodies. So if a blood cell comes into your body that it does not recognize, so say I'm type A and a type B blood cell comes into my body, that little B flag or marker uh, or antigen, I'm not going to recognize and it's going to stimulate my body to fight it and I'm going to produce antibodies against it. That antibody is the protein that I'm using to destroy pathogens. So 
Um, I'm using that to destroy those blood cells that I don't know about. And how and what it really looks like when those blood cells get destroyed, when I'm attacking those blood cells, it's something called a glutination. And so what actually happens is when I'm fighting those blood cells, I cause them to agglutinate or to clump up. Um, and they basically um, go through what's called hem hemolysis. They, they break all apart. And you can die from that. Um, and that's what was happening in, in, um, before they discovered that there were different blood types. And here's just a picture of what I was talking about here. So um, again, if, if you have type A blood, you have these little surface antigens that are A antigens, and they're telling your body that's what, that's what you are. So that means we would have B antibodies. So if B comes into our body, we're going to fight against it. And then the reverse is true. If I'm type B, I have B antigens and A antibodies. If I'm type AB, I have both antigens and neither of the antibodies. And if I'm type O, I have no antigens, but I have both antibodies. I would fight against A and B blood both. I wouldn't recognize either one of them. And then down here at the bottom is what actually happens when those two blood types come together that don't like each other. Um, they get this agglutination or clumping and they end up breaking apart and destroying each other. And so it's going to be really important if you need a transfusion that you know your blood type, the doctor knows your blood type, and you get the right type of blood. So if I'm type A, obviously I'm going to be able to receive blood from people that are A. We're a perfect match. I cannot um, cannot get B blood. I would not recognize that and I would fight it. Likewise, I can't get AB blood either because even though I would like the A part, I wouldn't like the B part and I would be fighting that part. Anybody can get from O because O doesn't have any surface marker. So it's kind of like the sneaky blood. Nobody knows that it's, um, nobody's going to recognize that it shouldn't be there. So anybody can get O blood. O is considered the universal donor. And then as far as who could I donate my blood to, again, anybody that matches me, so anybody with A, and I could donate to AB, even though I can't receive from them, I could donate to them because all I would be passing on is A, and somebody with AB blood would recognize A and B. They would be fine with either. So if you kind of look through this chart, the same rules apply. If I have B blood, I can give blood to anybody that has a B, so either B or AB. I can receive from B and always receive from O. And then if you notice down here, AB can only give blood to AB, but they can get blood from anybody. So they are called the universal recipient. No matter what happens, um, they can get blood from any of these people. And then O can give blood to anybody, but can only receive from other people that have O. So when you're in lab, when you come back to class, this is what you're looking for, that clumping. So you're going to have your blood sample, and you're going to have different types of sera. So you're going to have anti-A or anti-B, um, and you're going to add it to those blood samples, and you're going to be looking for that agglutination or for that clumping. So if I have A blood and I have A antibodies in my serum here, if I add that, if I add A antibodies, remember antibodies are programmed to fight that blood. So if it finds A, I'm going to see it clump and it gets cloudy and almost looks thick. And that's a positive result. So anytime you see that clumping, you know, ooh, it is that blood type. If I have my blood sample and I add B antibodies to it and it clumps, then I know there was B there. It found B and it clumped it. And so that's what you're going to be looking for. If it clumps with everything, then it's going to be A and B. If it doesn't clump with anything, then it's O. It didn't have any of those um, reactions. So, um, so that's what we're going to be looking for next time in class. So what I need you guys to do is complete the questions on your Google form. And, um, and then I look forward to seeing you in class tomorrow. Bye-bye.